When I first got the car, and even beforehand, I knew how rare the car was itself and the engine, we being a 3.6. What I didn't realise is how many they there was or are in yellow. Hi, I'm Dan, and this is my Porsche 964 Turbo. 3.6, by the way. I've had this car probably about two years now. I dare say it's my favourite out of all I've got, and I think that's because of the speed. The adrenaline's quite nice with it. It gives you a good sense of uh, you know, satisfaction when you drive it. I got it off uh, a friend of a friend, and it had not been on the road for quite some time, probably about 12 years. It was in a bit of a sorry state of repair, so when I did get it, it was sat for a while because I was just working out what I was going to do with my cars. And then all of a sudden, the past year or so, I've started to fix and repair it and I've done all sorts of different stuff to it. So as you can see, I've, I've put it on bags. Did all the suspension work to it. But when you did that, everything became apparent that it was broke. All the bushes and everything. So I managed to change all that. Put poly bush on it. Power flex, poly bushes. Then did the wheels. This is actually my second set of wheels that I've put on it. The original speed lines, which are just worth an absolutely insane amount of money I made them wider put some Michelin Cup 2 tyres on it and it, it handled amazing but I just didn't like the, the way that it looked I wanted it to be wider so hence why I've gone for these so now I've got the wheels the Workmeister wheels the 18 by 10 and a half on the front and 18 by 12 and a half on the back so I've got 315 on the back 265 tyres on the front it's funny actually because the front tyres were actually on the rear of the other car that I bought them from. It just goes to show how wide the front are. I first got into cars, I think, because of my granddad. He had a, an office and it was literally, you know, four walls and it was completely full from floor to ceiling of cars. You know, on like homemade racking. Me and my friend from school went over to the Max Power Show at NEC and I dare say it's just developed from there. At 17. Managed to get a car from my mum. She gave me a car, a Peugeot 106 diesel, which were like 58 horsepower. It was slow as anything. Crashed that because the brakes were knackered. And then I got into a Peugeot 306. I started uh, doing that up. Then someone crashed into that. Managed to get that repaired. And then moving on from that, I, moved, I bought a 306 GTI. And then ever since then, I've been buying and selling cars. So with this car, obviously you can see I've done a lot of work to it. The wrap itself is only a recent thing. Now, the reason that I've done the wrap is because the guy who did the paint on it previously didn't do a very good job and there were a bit of dirt in it. So I thought to myself, what's the point? He's not going to be able to get it fixed. He's not, not willing to do it. So I got it wrapped. Interior-wise, um, I haven't really done a lot to it. I've, obviously, you can see I've done the bags. So I have the, uh, the bag controller inside. That's just in the centre console. I've got the steering wheel from Only Charge Dubs. They helped me out when I went to driver's collection last year, so that was a big bonus. Because the actual old wheel was too uh, far forward. And every time you moved, I was hitting my hands on the indicators. And it was doing me head in. And at driver's collection last year, they had one for sale. And I'm like, oh, I get that for like 90 quid or whatever. So it was a bonus. In terms of the engine and the gearbox, I haven't done anything to the gearbox as such. But I put a short shifter on it from America that I imported. Engine-wise, I haven't done anything as such to the engine. The engine in itself has stayed the same. Because they're capable of about 500 horsepower with a few little mods. So I've done a bigger turbo. So I've put a Garrett, I think it's a GTX 35 turbo on it. So it's quite a nice roller bearing turbo. Brett at Top Gear Performance did the exhaust for me. We did an equal length full stainless steel exhaust. Central mounted turbo. The only issue with that is the exhaust is that short. It's insanely loud. So anywhere you go, don't get me wrong, it sounds amazing when you're on boost. Because one side is wastegate and one side is the exhaust. So it sounds amazing, but it's just loud. And I'm not sure whether it needs another box in it, but we'll have a word with about it. We'll see what happens. But the, the sound is amazing, honestly. It's, it's something that you wouldn't expect from a Porsche Turbo. Because of the way that he's done the exhaust, we've gone for long headers, but equal length. So it gets rid of the typical Beetle sound. It's quite nice. <laughs> So 
regarding the brakes, the calipers are original, but the discs on the rear have changed. So the reason that I've done that is because of how wide the wheels are. So I'm not sure if you know, but on the 964, they have two suspension mounting points. So what I've done, gone from the turbo wide body, and I've gone back to the narrow suspension settings, which meant I could go for a wider wheel. So obviously you know like I've got the wider wheels on the front, that's why I've got the, the ten and a half inch wide rims. But on the back, it wasn't a simple case of changing that. I had to change a complete suspension arm. So I changed the wishbone. And me being me, I was like, well it's fine, I could just swap the caliper across and the disc. Well it didn't fit. <laughs> so I was like, what am I gonna do? So I had to buy some Porsche 964 RS rear discs, which are actually a little bit thinner. So I had to shim the disc so it sat in the center of the caliper. Well, that cost me an actual arm and a leg. I also found out when I was doing it, I put brand new bearings, had them all shot blasted, did all the bushes, did the rear spring plate, so all the suspension components are brand new. I put the bearings in and I didn't put enough torque on the bearing and it kept collapsing. So just that extra few turns, it meant that the wheel bearing kept breaking and it kept coming out and breaking, uh, breaking the wheel bearings, which is really annoying. I think what I'm most proud of with the car is the fact that I've restored it and put it back on the road because of how it was. It wasn't in any fit state to be driven on the road because the tyres had not been changed in forever. I dare say they were a 90s tyre. So when I first got the car, I took it over to a friend's uh, unit and yard and did a few burnouts and donuts in it simply because the tyres were that knackered. And, he, and that's what I do anyway, it's my trait. So as soon as the tyre is low or it needs change, you can just burn them off, have a bit of fun out of it. But everything went after, the suspension kept knocking, all the bushes were broke, the gearbox wasn't great with the linkages, it was knocking everywhere, so the paint went knackered, tried getting it sorted out. Nick next door at Clean Detail, he helped me out and, and did a bit of polishing on it, but Ryan who works there and, and Nat who helped, they did a tremendous job, but there was a few little bits of areas which needed rectification with the paint, so man, that's one of the reasons why I did the full paint job. But Obviously it now needs another one. <laughs> when I first got the car, and even beforehand, I knew how rare the car was itself and the engine, we being a 3.6. What I didn't realise is how many they there was or are in yellow. So to give you an idea, there's only 30 in yellow and there's only five in right-hand drive, I'm led to believe. So when I did find that out, I was like, oh my God, that was even better than I first initially thought. I mean. Just to give you an idea, I think there's around 1,500, just under 1,500, 3.6 turbos. So all the 3.3, there's a lot more there of them. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how many there is, but either way, 1,500. And that's when they first came out. The person who I got it off, like I said, I'd owned it probably about 12 years, maybe 10 years, I think, something like that. It turns out a friend of a friend knows the person who owned it and he lives probably about three miles away from where I live. So he's actually found out that I've got it and wants to see it at some point. So I'm, I'll be glad for him to do that because it's just great the fact that someone locals owned it and he can see it because when he had it, it was on the road and then the bloke who owned it prior to me, you know, has let it get to rack and ruin effectively by not using it. All the bushes have gone, everything, so it needed completely refurbing. So I've done all that and the guy that I know called Andy, he said, well, I know Dan who's got it. He's like, yeah, I'll put you to it. So we spoke and we've been on the phone and um, he's just looking forward to getting it out. But it's just time. Like I said, I'll probably get over because he only lives, uh, like I said, a few miles away from where I live. So get it over to him and take him out in it. And I think he'll love it, especially with how it is now. I think uh, one of the, the, the funniest stories at the moment, and only quite recently, when I met you guys, is... Uh, Went to Stirgate and did some did some burnouts and donuts and things like that. I wasn't even driving doing that for 40 seconds and I blew a tire. So all the threads kept coming out of the tire on the way home. And I pulled over, not even a mile away from Stirgate. A bloke quite kindly pulled up next to me. He said, I don't suppose you need any help. And I went, I don't I don't suppose you've actually got some, you know, snips or wires or anything like that. She goes, I've got some nail clippers. 
So I've got a pair of nail clippers and just cut this cord off and that were it or on my merry way. So that was quite funny. I like that one. This in comparison to a daily, it's night and day. Don't get me wrong, it handles amazing, but it's an absolute pig to drive. It rattles, it bounces, it bangs, it's loud. You can't daily drive this car. It's so hard to drive and it's labour intensive. You have to concentrate all the time when you drive it because you're fighting with the wheel, with how wide the wheels are and obviously the air ride. With you adjusting it up and down, if you don't get it quite right, it throws your suspension out and it acts differently all the time. So this is probably one of the reasons why I might even put it back to standard and just get it normal and then when I do that, it'll be, it'll be a nice drive. The longest trip that I've done is I drove this one and my black one to Poland. So a friend drove the black one and I obviously drove this one. But the aircon stopped working and because it's so warm going through Germany all the way to Poland, I had to have the windows down. But with it being so loud, I had to drive at 70 on the autobahn just to get rid of the noise. And the wind noise that was coming in from the windows was just incredible. But you got used to it. You just like blocked it out. But that trip itself was, I think, 1,500 mile. It's funny, actually. I drove all the way there, pretty much all the way back to Rotterdam with no issues. It broke a mile away from Rotterdam Ferry. And the gear linkage snapped. So I managed to get it into first gear. Drove onto the ferry at like 5 mile an hour parked up and asked the guys on board because I had some tools as well I went, I don't suppose you've got a workshop because I need to do some drilling and I ain't got a drill on me he's like yeah no problem so these Philippine guys were just like all running around for me they couldn't do any, you know couldn't do anything but help me so I managed to get into the workshop uh, use the vice use the drill drill literally two rods together put a bolt through it managed to get it fixed and that's how it is now <laughs> not even fixed it properly <laughs> so you get into uh try and get it into fifth gear and it's the right pain it has it's just really tight but because of the short shifter on it it's so close it's 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 quite nice but it's it's like a race car so reaction wise with the wrap it gets a lot of attention simply because i don't think anybody is bagged in a 3.6 turbo because of how rare and valuable they are but I got it with the intentions of modifying it, just like every car. There's never a car that I haven't modified because I find, doesn't matter what the car they are, I find them boring if I don't put my own touch on it. And as you can see, what I've done to it is my own touch. And a lot of people love it, but a lot of people hate it. Like the black one, for example, direct comparison, slant nose, everybody, well, I say everybody loves it. A lot of people love it. A lot of people hate it. Same with that one. I can't believe you've done this, purists hate it, you know, I can't believe you've bagged it, you put your wheels on it, you've ruined a nice classic car, and I'm like, what's it matter? It's my car, I'll do what I want with it. So top speed wise, when I was on the Autobahn, because that's obviously a nice safe place to do it, I think is about 145. It'll do more, but because of the turbo that's on it, I'm not quite sure how the air fuel ratio mixture is, and with my 306, I've blown engines before at 160 odd mile an hour when I've been on the Autobahn. So I don't want to do that again. So I was a bit careful. You, you can just tell what it's like at the top end. And with me being in a, in a different country, I thought I'll just leave it at that. So I felt pretty safe doing that. Parts wise, you wouldn't believe it's actually really easy. For example, obviously I told you about the suspension earlier. I got bags for it. I bought those second hand off a guy that I know. He had them on his 964, so I took advantage. The reason that I bought those is because the suspension needed changing anyway because the coilovers were knackered. They were just knocking, absolutely knocking their arse off. So I thought I'll get some suspension, kept looking out. I didn't want to buy brand new stuff, just with me not knowing what the car was like. So then I saw the bags up, come up for sale and I thought, sorry, I'm going to buy those. So I did that. So going back to my Poland trip and what you said earlier about funny experiences in the car. When we had the car wrapped, I was designing, there's another funny story here as well, we were, we or say I, down at Auto Tins, was designing the wrap two, three days before we went to Poland. So I was halfway through doing stuff with the design and Dan was wrapping it, it was crazy, it was so hectic. But because we rushed to get it back, put back together, all the bumpers got put on, obviously the door was stripped down, the wing mirrors were off, the wipers were off. I drove all the way to Poland 
literally to the stadium, to the show, apart from a couple of miles with no wiper whatsoever. It didn't rain one bit. Well, it rained torrentially three miles away from the stadium, so much so that I couldn't even see out the screen. My friend, he's like a bloody oven. So when it, when it comes to condensation, the interior just steamed up somewhat chronic. It was crazy. So I was constantly wiping the window so I could see out, but the rain was coming down that fast and that heavy, you couldn't see any further forward in the bonnet. It was so scary. You could only just see um, the, the rear lights on the trucks that were in front of us. And because they were quite big and slow, I was maintaining constant pace. But it got to a point where it was so difficult to see. I had to pull over. No clue where I was pulling over. Turns out I pulled up on a junction of a motorway, on the highway if you like, and there was that many people coming past me, it was unbelievable. But the bloke who was in my black car, it was like the hare and tortoise. So they came up to us 45 minutes later, and I had to get out in the torrential rain, pull a wiper off his car, and put it on this one. So both cars had one wiper each, it was hilarious. <laughs> so you guys might have seen previously that the car has a little bit of damage on the side. So me and my friend had a bit of a, an incident probably a couple of months back where he spun out and, and crashed my black car into this one. So that's all getting sorted out through the insurance and what I will be doing is repairing that on my channel. So if you want to head over to it and subscribe, you can see the repairs as they, as they progress. The damage to the car isn't all that serious. The black one's a lot worse than the yellow one. So in essence, all I really need to do is sort a door, um, a side skirt, Potentially a side skirt, I'm not sure yet because I've not investigated it properly. I think it might be alright. It's plastic so it's bent a little bit. The wing definitely needs changing but there's no suspension damage. We've got a couple of curved wheels but that's simply because I went up the curb on the on the other side. No suspension damage but that's getting changed anyway. So yeah, it's a relatively straightforward fix. What I'm planning in the future, depending on when this video is out, is if you check out my Burke house. So the Porsche will be on there. I've got a black slant nose 911, a 993 which I'll be RWB in, and then potentially another a 993 which I will be having a Miles Works kit on. Then I've got a Peugeot 306 Maxi which I'll be doing. That I've had for a long time, so that might be something we can put on the channel when it's done. A Volvo Amazon T6 single turbo, that should be about 500 horsepower. I've got a GT4 which I use as a bit of a track day car, but depending on what I do with other projects, that will be going and I think this may be going so this the channel might end up being more of a restoration project putting it back to standard and how it should be considering I've done all the work to it and I've not filmed it I feel like this will be quite a, a good one to put on my channel I will be putting it back to standard so the wrap will be coming off it's going to get fully painted again wheels will be refurbished and put back to how they were and then the suspension gets put back to how it was with refurbished coilovers then put the standard wheel back on it, just, just basically a concourse restoration car.